Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. My name is Scott Howell, and you're watching Ask the Insurance Guy Online. Uh, I am joined today by a resident expert in Arrowheads here in Athens, Alabama, Mr. Wayne Kirkendall. And uh, Wayne was kind enough to come in. This is something that I've been wanting to do for some time now. Actually, ever since I met you, I've been wanting to do this. I think it's important before we get started, and I want, I want you to be able to introduce yourself. Um, I wanted to tell you guys kind of how we, how we got to know each other. Yep. I think you called me. Somebody brought some airheads in. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. And, and I was wanting them real bad, so I started to lie to you. Yeah, well, I, 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 hope, I hope that's not what happened, because that ruins my whole story. But I didn't lie to you. <laughs> so, so let me tell you guys what happened. What's up? Let me tell you guys what happened. Everybody here needs to hear this. So I had someone come in here one day, and they actually brought me some... Some arrowheads and is this them? yes, okay. it is. Okay, and they had they they, they wanted to sell, them. And, and 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 they had them in a a uh, a uh, just a like a sandwich box, yes. like a uh, what do you call it? Tupper, Tupperware uh, box. It was about this big and about this high, and they had them layered with paper towels. And at first, I was like, well, I don't even know if these are real. And I don't know enough about arrowheads to know what you know what to look for or anything. So I didn't even know what to what to buy them for. And and they said, uh, well, I'll take a hundred dollars for them. And they had been in their family. And so, you know, I, I, at first I was like, well, I really don't want to buy these. But then I thought, well, somebody's going to buy them. Yeah. Because they're going to go around until somebody sells them. So I said, I tell you what, I'll do. I'll give you a hundred dollars. So I, I gave them $100 for the airheads, and then the next thing I knew was I have got to find somebody who knows something about airheads to be able to figure out whether I just bought something somebody did just in their garage or, or what. So I started asking people here in Athens, Alabama, which is where we are today, Athens, Alabama, in my Athens office, about who knows about airheads. Who in, who in Athens, Alabama, and every single person I ask, you need to call Wayne Kirkendall. You you got to call him. Call him. He knows he 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 knows all you want to know about airheads. So I picked up the phone and I called you, and I'm I'm gonna finish it right here. To pick the phone, brought them to you. Sure enough, they were real, and um, good and good airheads. Now let me tell you the rest of the story because you don't know this part. Okay. So you picked out for me, I asked you to pick out like, you know, eight, nine, ten of the best. And and here it is. I had these put in a in a frame in a shadow box. And this is this is the probably the I guess eight to ten, twelve of the best arrowheads out of that collection. And then I got with the parents of the person that sold them to me and found out exactly where they were they were found and they were found in cotton fields at Sugar Creek in the late 1960s. That's the size there. Yeah. And so here here comes the rest of the story. So I got to thinking about those arrowheads. And I still had I still had the entire pro probably what 60 70 arrowheads yeah, left at, um, besides these and I thought to myself, you know, that we just need to give these back to these folks. So I, I took the Tupperware jar, the, the, the person came in here to pay for their insurance, and I said, hey, I, as you can see, I've mounted eight, nine, ten of these, but I want you to have these back, because they, these belong to your family. And uh, so she was, she was ecstatic about the fact that I actually gave her back, you know, the, the rest of them. So um, that, that's kind of the rest of that story there. <laughs> I, I ended up just giving back, uh, you know, what, what, what we did not use here. but. Um, well, I know you want to be honest about all this. There's 17 arrowheads there. Okay, yes. All right, 17. 17. I'm sorry. I, it looked like 10. I didn't count them before I got on the air today. So, um, so I did while you was talking. Okay. So 17 mounted. Now, now let's go back to back to you and 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 tell our audience today. How did you get into the arrowhead business? How long have you been doing it? I know you've got a huge collection. So go ahead. Well, the, I, I don't know they got a huge collection, but I've got a good collection from stuff that we found. I don't think I've, I've got any in my collection that I've bought. 
Mm. I, I did buy some at one time and I turned around and sold them to another fellow. But uh, we started collecting back in the, right after the dam broke. Okay. Um, Wheeler Dam broke and people were just going out in the original channel picking them up by bucket loads. And I really? heard this story. And I was in my teens at the time and Wayne Barkstall's daddy, Maurice Barkstall, was one that got me. He, I wanted to hunt, didn't know where to hunt. Right. And didn't realize this area was so blessed with just so many good sites. Mm -hmm. And now uh, a lot of those sites are not humble because there's trees planted there or the subdivision or whatever. Right downtown Athens is a huge site. Right. Right where that big spring is. Mm -hmm. And um, the Fuchs' house, when they plowed and dug up for it, they found a bunch of arrowheads. So it's a great site right there in downtown Athens and a lot of others are covered up. But uh, just going and then Mr. Cameron and Mr. Hawks put out a book back in the late 50s, early 60s. I tried to find it and I couldn't find it today. And I couldn't find it online because I don't think um, it's in print. You had to find one that's uh, a used one. And they had typed the areas that they had found in the Decatur, North, uh, North Alabama area. Okay. Uh, Elk River, Tennessee River, Sugar Creek, and some of the other smaller creeks. And then the Sun Circle and Human Hands book came out, and that was another good reference book. But you said I was an expert, and I'm not an expert. I have learned a lot about them, but I haven't hunted in years because this no-till farming. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about no-till farming. Yeah, please. You brought that up earlier. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. That mm -hmm. has killed the area head hunting. Has it really? And, uh, and our good lawmakers down in Montgomery right. made it possible that only people that can hunt TV land now is the game wardens. Ah, okay. So they watch the river, but I think they do the hunting. Right. Um, but they're making it illegal to pick it up, even an artifact that's topsoil. I'm not talking about digging, I'm just talking about something's laying out there and they're not supposed to pick it up. Wow. And that's a law that. I, I don't see why right. that would be legal, but it is on TV and land. And if, if you're a lawmaker in Alabama, help help us out with our airhead hunting here. Yeah, I mean we're we're not trying to make money out. We're just trying to preserve. And nobody can know the history. of The best collections in Montgomery at the mm -hmm. art, uh, state archives there. have got a great collection. Then Manville has another great collection. Mm -hmm. um, and the way you learn about it is seeing it. Sure, you can't just hear about it. You got to go out and see it. And touch it and, and learn about it that way. So, um, area hunting has really subsided. And back when I was in the in the sixties, when I started, everybody was hunting. I mean, you get up daylight, mm -hmm. get out there before everybody else because if you didn't, you was gonna be following somebody. Right. Uh, I've got a good story about a friend of mine just passed away, Wayne Barstool. We hunted the same areas. We hunted together. And one day he couldn't go, and it was about dark. It was up at Elmont. And I said, I've got to go up there because I can't go back Saturday morning. Right. Because I have to work. But I can go Saturday afternoon. So I'm going to deter anybody from hunting that place. So I go up there at dark and just tromp the area. It's not planted yet. And so let's see footprints. Mm -hmm. And so I go to work the next day. And about noontime, getting ready to get off, Wayne comes by the house and says, guess what I found? And he had found a, a perfect stone pipe. Mm hmm and he, I said, where'd you find it? He said, the old man. I, and that's where I'd been. I didn't right. tell him I'd been there the night before. And he said, and some idiot had stepped right beside it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I told him years later that that idiot was me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so let's talk about how these arrowheads came to be. Let, let's go back mm -hmm. in time. And because there's a lot, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people watching this right now that don't know the history, <clears throat> that don't probably don't even know who, how, how these came to pass. Yeah. Well, I'm not a believer that the, the Earth is billions of years old. Okay. Um, I, I don't think it's that old. But God can create it to look any any age He wanted to. But I think with carbon dating that they have gone back to, you have everybody will agree that there's like five periods. Mm -hmm. There's the Paleo period, which is those about 10,000 BC. Right. And then you've got the uh, Archaic period, mm -hmm. which is about 7,500 BC. Then you've got, and this is the period that I didn't know about until I did a little research, and that's the Gulf Formation period, which is 2,500 BC. I thought we went from the Archaic period 
to the woodland period. Mm -hmm. And the woodland period's next, it's like a thousand AD. And then we've got the Mississippian period, which is oh, 1300 and on until the Trail of Tears came about. Mm -hmm. So the oldest points are, are your paleo points, and they're the most valuable points if you wanted to sell them. And mm -hmm. Most of us that collected and hunted didn't sell. We just right. we had a passion for preserving. Mm -hmm. And um, and a lot of those are the fluted points. Mm -hmm. that, that's the ones that we're bringing really. If when, what do you mean by fluted? What do you mean by that? It's It's got... Turn, turn them around. Okay. All right. It's got right here in the middle. You'll have a, a, a trough uh -huh. flicked, flaked out, and, and there's a lot of theory for what it was for hacking the shaft. Some of it was for some of people say it was for bleeding the animal, but it's just a good long groove that's real that's chipped out, either on both one side or both, and sometimes a double flute. Hmm. And the Cumberlands, the uh, Clovis, those are the points. So um, basically, there were the fluted points. But that was the paleo period, and mm -hmm. there are paleo sites here, so we know the Indians existed here, long time, ten thousand BC. Right. Oh wow. Okay. And and the the points that we have in in here right now, what tell tell us? Those would be mostly woodland and some Mississippi. And those are later points. There's nothing there that's real. Um, and what tribe? What tribe would have done? Well, that? it's it's you got five basic tribes, and that's you got the Cherokee, Choctaw. Chickasaw, um, let's see, the Creek, and the Yuki. Okay, and, and the Yuchi, or Yuchi, I think is what it said. The Yuchi were the mound builders. That was the later, that was the later, and the uh, Creek were the ones that built the, the homes. Uh, had actually mm -hmm. a, structures that they built rather than teepees. Right. And the others were more nomadic, they moved around, and what we, how you would find them they always had to have water. Mm -hmm. I mean, every site, you might find a stray point where somebody's thrown one or shot one. Right. And most people think these are arrow heads. They're, none of those are arrow heads. They don't go on an arrow. Right. Those are spear points or tools. Mm -hmm. The real arrow heads are very small. Right. Because you, you can't take that and very shoot it very far. Right. Uh, we call them arrow heads, but um, te technically they're spear points or tools. Mm -hmm. And the, you don't have any true, what I call the arrow heads that were actually shot. But you'd find those you know, just various places, but to find a, a uh, really a hot spot of finding them, you got to find where they live. Mm -hmm. And it's always near water, and it's always not in the low area, it's always on the, you find a site and you'll see a rise out there, that's where you start looking. If you see a lot of flint, you probably have a site. And if you have black areas where they had uh, fire pits or something like that, where they would cook and do um, that kind of thing, then you could find well, they lived here a while, and mm -hmm. then that'd be a site you. But there's just tons of sites around here, and it, and it's because of, of the river. The, right, they're they're living around the river. That's on that, the high that, side of the river. That's the way they travel. Okay, uh, very few would pack cross land. They would travel the waterways, and that's how they did it. We've got obsidian here. It's obsidian points. Obsidian points are not native here. That was, I mean, they were hunters, and you know the first slaves in this part of the country were Indians. But they didn't work out. They didn't work out because a man, a male Indian, was not going to farm. Right. That was below his dignity at that time. The women did that. They hunted. They provided the meat. Right. The women would do the chores around the around the teepee, and then later the boats. Um, and then they, it was just a woman's job. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to do it. Mm -hmm. And they knew the land. Mm -hmm. They knew every bit of the land better than, than the white people did. So and so they were they, the males were actually going out and hunting. That, yeah, at, basically at that at the earlier time, that's what they were all hunters. Would they hunt at night or during the day? That, I don't know. I mean, I'll ask one of them if you ever. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I ever run into one, I'll ask. I, I didn't know if that was. A, <laughs> I didn't know if that was kind of a known. Well, thing. we. I tell you what, they didn't have game wardens. Right. So I don't. Right. I, if they had a torch to spotlight with, I'm sure they would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, man, I, I just find it so interesting. Uh, and I have some friends. I know. I don't know if he's watching this or not. Charlie Grimes and some other guys that, you know, they'll still get out and, and go arrowhead hunting and, and and look for for arrowheads from time to time. And I've just always been intrigued by it. I remember being a, a small boy at my house mm -hmm. and I lived in rural Alabama in a, a kind of a rural area and it's something that you said kind of substantiated this but around my house when I was growing up we found a lot of flint 
Yeah. And I would find what, what I deemed as looked like an era head, and, and at the time I'm a kid, so I don't know, but um, yeah, around that area. But um, And then we, of course, having all that farmland and the, uh, the um, Butahatchee River running through uh, Hamilton and Marion County, oh, yeah. we, had, yeah. we had a lot of era heads. Oh, we yeah. even had some Indian mounds yeah. uh, in that area. There's so, some here. Yeah. Now, what, 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 were, what were the significance of the mounds? What were they doing with that? There were, there were things, there were mounds that were called burial mounds, and you could find artifact in if you were, technically you're not supposed to do that, right. and even back then, you would get more of the University of Alabama, somebody like that right. involved, and the big digs I know in Tennessee, the University of, of uh, Middle Tennessee State University has a big program of going out and documenting big areas where Indians live, mm -hmm. and uh, the mounds, I'd say the majority of mounds were not burial mounds. Mm -hmm. The smaller mounds would be, but were temple mounds, mounds of of um, worship or mm -hmm. that type thing where mm -hmm. the chief would live. And there are some mounds. There's one over on um, Hobbs Island, the big temple mound there. Mm -hmm. There's one out here on 72, but it's it's not a temple mound. It's not a burial mound. It's just a small mound for some reason. Right, for something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just really, I appreciate you coming by today and talking a little bit about it. Uh, I'd love to go out with you sometime. Even, I would too. Even, even <laughs> yeah, I know. I wish somebody would plow. Yeah, I know. I now, know. the law of states now, if I understand it right, you can hunt on private land as long as you have the owner's permission to hunt. Mm -hmm. And um, that's TV lands off limits. Right. So most of Tennessee River is off limits. Hmm. Uh, based on that law, which I think is ridiculous. I mean, it's but what are they going? I mean, how could how could they catch you if you're out? I mean, the game warden just yeah. asks what you're doing, and well, you say, they "Well, watch and yeah. if they see you out there walking the bank. You don't have a fishing pole, and you right. got a sack, or you got a a right. pouch around you. You got right. a cane poking around, and they probably right. think you're out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would stop you and oh, talk to you about it's, it. No, it's a fine. Okay, it's jail. It's even uh, prosecutable. What? Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, I had no idea any of this yeah, going on. Well, that's, I shouldn't have told you. Now, but ignorance is no excuse. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I appreciate you coming. Tell yeah. everybody. Tell everybody. You know who you're with, uh, real briefly, and and. Uh, okay, we are now with Strategic Financial Partners. I'm on the east side of the square, 105 South Marion Street, upstairs in Suite 202. Um, just recently moved to them in December, and um, been there nearly 10 years. So. Uh, but let me mention this too while I'm here. Uh, we also have a storytelling event. You, guys, you need to listen to that. This is the most important part of the whole thing here. And um, each each October, this will be our 10th year, we brought the best storytellers in the state and in the actually United States. Most of them are out of state. We have one that will be coming from Alabama this year. But the rest of them are coming from West Virginia, North Carolina. Um, I'm not even sure where. Um, they are fun. Then we got the oh a group that we got this year is three on the string. Oh wow! And uh, they'll be here October the twentieth, twenty first, and twenty second. The festival starts on the eighteenth for the school yeah. kids. Our legislators help pay for that. We bring every school child from age grade three through twelve, private school, home school, city school, county school, and any area schools that we have room for. We have three days of that, two sessions, and it'll see about nine thousand people. Most people have seen it, the tents on the square, east side of the square, mm -hmm. and just have a great time. And this will be our 10th year, so we're excited about that. And that is October when? It's, it's, the tent goes up on the 16th, on a Sunday. Okay. But the first, uh, Tuesday night, which will be the 18th, is um, um, amateur night. So okay. anybody that wants to can put in a demo. Hey, hey! And um, it's if, my time to shine there. I think we can take six or seven, and we take the top six or seven that puts in the demo, and then the the um, professionals judge you. Mm -hmm. And then on Thursday night, when they start for the for the audiences, and then the winner gets to come in and tell with them that night. That's so awesome. he gets to be a professional for one night. That's all. Awesome. He gets to come to the banquet, and we do some things for the winner. And this is the fourth year we've done this. Okay. So we're looking forward, and we've had some great storytellers. I bet. The late Dan Williams was one of them. Uh, Mike Blakely has told Shane Black, yeah. people that people know. Frank Travis, who's on the city council now, he actually won it the year he told. Um, 
So we've got some, some good tellers locally. Guys, if you're in North Alabama and you want to come out and see something that's that's really special, come come out to that. October 18th, 19th, 20th, that time frame. Make plans, whether you're in Hamilton, Vernon, Sullivan, Russellville, Florence, any Huntsville, come out and watch that. I think everybody, I think you'd really, really enjoy it. And yeah, uh, Last year we had people from 26 states. 26 states. As far year. as California, one from Canada, and a guy comes from uh, New Mexico every year. Every year. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Actually yeah. sends us money, sent a check to help pay for it. He said, I, I love it so much, I'm going to help you. That, that's awesome. Sent a $1,000 check, got it yesterday. Hey, and if you find an arrowhead at your house, and you want to figure out what it is, this is your man right here. I'm this an expert. Your you know what an expert is? I called you. I've heard. A re <laughs> resident, resident expert. No, an expert. An ex is a has been. A spurt's a drip under pressure. I heard that. That's exactly right. <laughs> so what, on, on that terminology, yeah. I'm an expert. I'm not an expert. Well, you you know a lot more than a lot of folks do. I, I'll just say that. Let's just put it like that. And if you're going to plow a field and it's near a river, please call us. Yes. Yes. We would love to get them Yes, there. <laughs> absolutely. Guys, have a great day. This is Scott Howell. Scott Howell and Associates, Nationwide Insurance, the insurance guy, online.com. Love you guys. Thanks. Nice. For, and, I'm trying to be. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, if, if you do have insurance needs, give us a call. Thank you so much for joining us today. YouTube, Periscope, Facebook Live, we love you. Have a great day. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Adios. Thanks, man. Thanks. Love it. It was yeah. great.